605. Are there any adjustments to the agenda? All right. Um, so we'll start off with a quick introduction of everybody. Um, I'm Kathy Galuzzo, board chair. I am first branch, a uh, first branch board member from Tunbridge. Um, we'll, um, we'll just go around the table and then we'll go around the um, Michaela Martin, Intensive Programming System Support Coordinator for um, the SU. Uh, Onda Adams, Chief Academic Officer for the SU. Hi, my name is Bill Edgerton. I'm with the Rochester Stockbridge Unified District. Annette Rhodes, Director of Special Services for the Supervisory Union. Tara Weatherow, Business Manager. Rodney Rainville, uh, uh, White River Unified District. Ray Ballou, Technology Communications. Uh, Jamie Kinarney, Superintendent of Schools. We'll start with you, Michael. Uh, Michael Livingston, I'm on the school board in Sharon. Nancy? You're muted. muted yes. Nancy, you're muted. Nancy Pageway, White River Unified District. <laughs> Dustin? Uh, yeah, I'm on the uh, Stratford School Board. And Nell? Uh, Nell Donaldson, new to the Newton School School Board in Stratford. Stacy? Stacy Peters, Granville Hancock Unified District. Sylvia? Sylvia Moore, Sharon District. Andrew? Andrew Jones, I'm in the White River Unified District. And Amy. Welcome, Amy. Hi, thank you. Sorry I'm late. It's been a rough afternoon of running around. Uh, Amy <laughs> Will, I'm from the uh, Rochester Stockbridge Unified School District. All right. Welcome, everybody. Welcome, new board members. Glad to see you here tonight. Um, I approve the minutes of Tuesday, March 26. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second? Second. Is there any discussion on the minutes? If none? Minutes are approved. Board correspondence or communications, is there anything? All right. Public comments? I don't think we have anybody on. I do not think so. A public comment from First Branch Unified District, our budget passed. Okay. So far, I think everybody's passed, right? We're four for four. Four for four. Way to go. All right, um, reports to the board. Uh, so good evening. Uh, if you, I'll try not to talk too much tonight. I have laryngitis. I can't seem to kick it. Um, the, what I wanted to say is uh, in regards to legislative updates, um, I, it sounds like to me, based on watching some Senate ed testimony, um, earlier this afternoon um, in regards to the confirmation hearing uh, for Secretary Saunders, it appeared to me that they, they expected the yield bill to be approved by the House and moved to them uh, by tomorrow. So I don't know if that came out of the House or not today. Um, but I would say this, based on when the where the yield bill started to where it is now, I think um, all of our efforts have gone a long way in better protecting, um, frankly, our, our public schools in regards to not having it be such that there is a bill that was gonna go to a, possibly a funding formula without having a better understanding what an actual student was gonna um, equate to as weight um, because there hadn't been any study or suggestion made of that. So what they've really done is they've said that we understand we need to study um, sustainability of public education in the state. And so they're going to have a committee that is going to have better representation. If you look at the initial yield bill, this committee now does have people from the field joining that group to make recommendations, which I was appreciative of. Um, it clawed back that idea of going into our reserves uh, for buildings and capital improvements and taking that money, if you if you remember the initial yield bill was going to claw back any reserves that we had put away and put it back into um, the Ed Fund, 
um, that provision's gone. Um, the yield is actually set at nine thousand eight hundred and change. I should have known that, but it's 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 highlighted in the last email I shared with all of you. So that has been set there, which is a better yield than what we had um, been projecting um, in your budget mailers for Granville, Hancock, and Rochester Stockbridge that I've gone to print and for the rest of our budgets that had already been approved. Um, you know, I would say that um, we are clearly <coughs> um, pointed in a direction of going to a foundational formula if you look at all the testimony and conversation um, and really the charge of the committee. Um, you know, my hope is that they're doing a really good data analysis across the field. One of the things that I try to really emphasize in my testimony since I last saw some of you is that small districts do not necessarily equate to higher spending per pupil. Um, and Rochester Stockbridge right now is a really good example of that. Their expenditure budget is only up 4%. And if you take away all the weights of the pupils, they're still in the middle of the pad of the state in regards to what they're spending per student. Um, and so I also have emphasized that we need to look at cost analysis of special ed across the state to see if school districts are actually implementing early interventions and supports through a multi-tiered system of supports, a response to intervention. And then also I think it behooves them to also be analyzing what is being spent at supervisory um, union and district levels in regards to administrative cost. I would put our SU uh, administrative cost, we're the second largest geographically in the state. We have the second or third most districts in the state. And I would argue that if you were to look at our SU budget, we're one, we gotta be in the bottom 5% in the state. So I just think there's some things that they do need to analyze. What I would emphasize is this shouldn't be assumed that smaller districts cost more. And I think there's a assumption in Montpelier that that's the case. And so anytime I get an opportunity to talk with folks around this, I just kind of, I just keep pushing those points to make certain that committee does a thorough job. I would also let you know, if you look, the school boards association is going to be able to appoint someone to that group. So isn't the superintendent's group. I do think it's going to be a, a real timely endeavor, but I am going to ask the trustees to consider my appointment on that group because I think it's important for a supervisory union to have a representative on that committee. So I don't know how the VSA is going to go about that membership, but I, I just want you to know as a board that I am going to try um, to have the VSA consider me for that appointment. It, it's in statute. The executive director will be the person to appoint um, to that study committee because uh, I think it's important that supervisory union and, and smaller districts who have already unified voices are at the table um, and that we make certain that our narrative's there as well. Um, and so that is the biggest piece of legislative update I wanted to give you. The other one is um, that we've been following throughout is the PCB testing bill has gone to Senate and there's been no action on it. So I don't know where PCB testing is going to lie. I know that they have not put any money towards supporting districts with remediation. So that's something that I think we just need to be, I'm, I want you to know that I'm following and I will certainly advocate with the VSA around. I just, my answer to this is if we're going to continue to do PCB testing, the state has to help districts with the remediation. That there should be funding to support that remediation. Right now there's not. Um, and so that's a bill that's in the Senate. I don't know where it's going to go out of the Senate. And you may say, Jamie, why are you so concerned about this? I am concerned, frankly, that this PCB testing could be possibly another lever that if you don't so support schools with remediating, it's another tactic to close schools, possibly. I'm just putting it on the table. I have not said that publicly before, but that is my worry about this. So I do think that there's some political nature to that bill. 
Um, and then finally, in regards to um, the literacy bill, that was being tested, that's scheduled to have further testimony in House uh, Senate. Um, I have let the VSA know your guys' concerns in regards to um, ba uh, banding certain instructional approaches as something that we need to be communicating that we're concerned about. Frankly, I think all of our energy right now in regards to testifying um, and getting in front of folks has been so focused on the yield bill. I don't know if we've done necessarily a great job with the PCB bill or the literacy bill. So know that I'm going to reach out to Jeff Francis here tomorrow and say, Jeff, I think there's been good work done where the yield bill currently stands, but here are two other bills and here's our concern, at least from WRVSU. Um, and so I wanted to highlight that. I did get the opportunity today to watch a little bit of uh, Senate Ed's um, conversation after the interview of Secretary Saunders in regards to the confirmation hearing. I expect a vote to happen from Senate Ed tomorrow. They committed to a vote within the next 24 hours. Um, the conversation in that committee was um, pretty interesting. I'd encourage you, if you didn't have the opportunity, to see them conversing after um, the Q&A with Secretary Saunders that it is worth the time to, to view. Uh, I would say that that committee is very split right now in regards to what direction they're going to go uh, moving her uh, Secretary Saunders out of committee or not. Um, I also thought the conversation possibly gave you a little more insight into just how political public education right now is in this state. Um, and I, I've been saying this to boards, I'm going to continue to say it. As your superintendent, I think we need to focus on policy and get politics out of education. I think we need to assume good intentions and we got to keep the focus on kids. But just watch that group for a little bit, and I think you'll see the angle of how political things are right now. And I'll take any questions folks may have. Jamie, this is Michael. Is that a simple majority coming out of Senate? How do they approve for a yeah, yeah, the It is. Yep, yeah, it's a simple majority out of Senate Ed. Um, and what they can do is essentially say that they support it, and again, that's a vote, right? Like, it'll be a motion. They don't support the nominee, or they're going to allow the nominee to go to a floor without support um, for a vote, which may be where they are right now, Michael. They are, they're definitely split. Um, yeah. So those are their three options. And then in the Senate, it is a majority vote. Is it split on party lines? <clears throat> I frankly don't know the party makeup of the Senate Ed. I know the chair is a Democrat, and he seems yep. to be supportive of yep. um, the secretary. Yep. So that's tomorrow, you think? The Senate, yes, they, um, they all agreed that they would take their vote within 24 hours, and that was finishing up around... 10 of 4 or so when I watched it. And just so you know, thank you, thank you to Tara. The yield went up to 9,846. How much of a change was that? Uh, it was almost 100. Okay. So it could, be, it could be a few pennies for everyone. Yeah. Bill had something and did anybody else you had a comment and then a uh, question the comment is that we need somebody as secretary of education that has the background and knowledge and experience and record to lead us forward and i think this state is blessed by having a number of qualified talented superintendents that have all those <coughs> qualities and i happen to think that i'm in this room, we've got one of those, and I don't want to lose them for a minute. Yeah, but <laughs> um, I'm I'm disappointed that we can't find a talent within here because this talent within this state is there, and a proven track record. Secondly, Jamie's, I support Jamie's idea to 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 be on that study commission, and I'm wondering, Kathy, how we go about that. Whether we 
vote to uh, to uh, approve uh, Jamie to go forward to, to get on that committee, or, or how you want to do I that? I don't think you need to do that at all. I mean, I think what you need to do is let me feel out from the trustees how they're going to go about it, and maybe a letter of support may be needed from the okay. board. That we could do. Thank you. All right. Um, and anybody else? I just wanted to follow and say that the uh, Senate Ed is has scheduled to meet at three thirty tomorrow, according to the agenda today, um, to discuss today's conversation and potentially. Thank you for keeping us up to date on all of that, Jamie. And I concur with Bill there. You were talented enough, you would be a great person, but we love you guys. You know, I'm not applying to secretary. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want any more stress. All right. Anything else for Jamie? Okay. Thanks, Jamie. On. Uh, I'll keep it brief because I know we're on a tight timeline. We're starting to think about transition plans for students. Um, we've got some more money in the bank for materials and professional development, and we are um, got dates set to finalize the proficiency work in the last couple of areas. We had a couple of some teachers um, who are eager to do that, so they will be working um, once May comes around and we've finished up with state testing. They'll be coming into this building in small groups working on uh, the remaining content areas. So. Happy to take any questions, but keeping it quick. Any, any questions for Anda? I've got a comment. Um, she's very modest, but in her report, over a hundred thousand dollar grant mm -hmm. that was achieved. Uh, and it takes talent to put together a, a grant proposal, but also the underlying strength mm -hmm. of what we're doing here to convince those people that the money should be here and deserves to be here. It's $102,000 from an ESSER improving student academic outcomes in computer science, English language, arts and literacy and mathematics grant. Mm -hmm. So I just, um, it's so easy for us just to move on. I think it's important for us to recognize the talent in this room and the difference they're making. Nice. Thank you, Alda. Thanks, Bill. Good round of applause. <laughs> All right, guys. Um, you're up. Most, uh, I will talk most about my report during the um, the number 11 resignations and new hires section okay. um, since that was, as you could tell, looking through my report, it's quite a lengthy list, so I'll go into more detail then. Okay. Okay. Fair enough. Fair so you all have my report. It outlines what's happening in May. We've got the Sharon Bond vote coming up, and we have the Rochester Stockbridge Unified District budget vote, and we have the Granville Hancock Unified District budget vote. Other than that, we are plugging through, getting our reports done, wrapping up all of our final amendments for our current year grants to finalize all of our spending there, and then a really large report that's due from multiple departments within the central office as well as our buildings is a new report this year, which is the ESSER Annual Performance Reporting on Fiscal Year 23. Um, beyond financials, which is what they usually look for in that report, they are now requiring us to also provide student demographics and more detail on utilization of all of the funds that we spent on all of the grants um, that were considered ESSER. So that's multiple grants and again, multiple departments are working on it. So it's a really large report this year. And then I'll answer any questions. Questions for Tara? Thumbs up. <laughs> Can I just add a caveat to Tara's because I meant to mention this in my report. Mm -hmm. um, I, I put this in my written report, but I just wanted to make certain the board realize that we did not receive our 21 century grant funding for summer and after school programming grant that we've received for a number of years. Um, we received a score of funding, uh, but due to schools adding after school and summer programs um, specific because they had utilized ESSER funding to do so, more folks apply, applied for this competitive grant and they prioritize schools 
that frankly had a higher rates of free and reduced lunch rates than our district does. So there just wasn't enough funding to go around. I talked in my report, we do plan to leverage um, ESSER funding that we have left, our community school grant okay. um, to pay for summary programming this coming year. Excuse me, we are also running some surplus funds within 21C that will carry us for the next year so that it's not going to impact any of our local district budgets. Tara and I will, will come to you in June with our One Planet Coordinator to talk about what is going to be our budgeting and focus for sustainability moving past next year. Um, and so I want you to know we're working on that. Doesn't mean that programming is going to change for anyone. We know it's important, but we got to figure out a sustainability plan. There is one other grant that we did apply for for after school programming um, that was provided by the Agency of Ed. It's remember I talked to you about they took some of the 21C funds out of the Ed Fund and made it a competitive grant that could be used with independent schools. We had applied for that funding as well. And so we're waiting to see whether or not we might receive funding that way. Um, so stay tuned on that. I wanted to highlight that. It was in my written report, but I want to make certain everyone had seen it. Um, so that's where we're at right now in regards to 21C. Yeah, Thank you. I would be happy to uh, field any questions uh, here or virtually uh, on my report. I'm going to come. Good. I'm just smiling at Ray, and I want everybody to look at the second page of his report. Uh, he went into great detail because he knows that, some, that the question is going to be coming about E rate and what does the E stand for in E rate. And he dug deep and he found out that E and the E rate doesn't mean anything, which kind of gives me pause because I used to think everything had a reason, but we found out it doesn't there. Now, we move further on to that, a word that I've never heard of, my wife heard of, and she knows how to pronounce it, I don't, and it's called portmanteau. Yeah. And um, I, I didn't do well in elementary school either, so I didn't have this, but it's, it's, it's a one word with two meanings, and they're combined. And I think that's kind of neat, and I've kept a educational terminology log that I hope to add to the mentoring notebook and with the permission of this board I'd like to add that term as well as the whizzy wig term which I think is fantastic but it stands for what you see is what you get so um, Ray I appreciate you educating us and I plan to memorializing this in the educational ed, um, terminology thing. I do have a question for Ray. He doesn't have to answer it tonight, but we're talking about acronyms. What does OTL mean? Ah. Anybody? I was called this from, from elementary school to high school to wherever it is. It's called out to lunch. <laughs> Thank you, Ray. You inspire me. I need OTL on my desk. I like that. <laughs> All right. So, White River Policy Committee. I was not there. So, somebody well, else that was there? The first thing is the policy B3, which we the committee took action on last meeting. Okay. So, we need to discuss policy B3. Stacey, you want to lead us through that? You work, you work quite a bit on this policy. Where's Sylvia? Sylvia usually gives these updates. Uh, yeah, sure, I can give, I can give the update on this policy. So we, work, we did work quite a bit on this policy. Uh, this is one of those where we really uh, took a hard look um, at, um, at what it said and what it needs to say. Um, we got hung up on a few issues. One, um, when we originally drafted this, 
marijuana was an illegal drug because it is no longer illegal in the state of Vermont, but is federally. And also, we actually don't want people using it for those things. Um, secondly, um, this didn't really take into account the use of prescribed or over-the-counter drugs um, that might impair uh, an employee while on campus or while at work functions. So we wanted to make sure that that was encapsulated. And um, third, Andrew brought up the very good point that um, the policy used to just refer to alcohol, and there are, in fact, other types of alcohols that are used in school settings, notably um, as solvents or uh, cleansers in the you know, chemistry labs and other activities. So we wanted to make sure that we were actually defining alcohol um, to the purpose we needed, not um, incidentally banning an educational tool. So I think that we covered all of those things. Um, we also want to make sure that usage was pretty clearly defined. Of course, we want to make sure that um, we're not um, discriminating against anyone who needs to take uh, a medication and want to make sure that people can, you know, people have um, the freedom to take what they need for any you know, real ailment, ailment, so long as it doesn't impair um, their ability to, uh, to to remain functional at their workplace. So I think that this um, covered everything. As Jamie said, we spent several months going back and forth and working with our lawyer on it and advanced this out of committee a couple of weeks ago. Any questions, comments about the policy? So we don't have it on here for No, for it's not for action, yeah. So yeah there was pretty, you know, significant changes. Mm -hmm. So I thought we needed to do a reading with all the district boards and then if we don't if I don't gather any, you know, major changes over the coming month, we will warn it for action. Of, you know, it's a revised policy, so we would warn it for action at the May full board meeting. Okay. All right. Um, <coughs> so we are on to discussion items. Draft number two of the WRVSU communications and outreach plan. Ray, you want to take this? Uh, I'll be honest and say no. I can take it. You just worked hard on it. So uh, we have draft two of a communication and outreach plan, um, which has had some pretty good revisions, uh, thanks to uh, admin team and board member feedback. Uh, Bill, thank you for your working with us uh, directly with Kate McLean, our coordinator of communication. Um, and so you'll see a second draft of the plan um, which I think has definitely, it's much more in alignment in regards to setup, excuse me, of our strategic plan. But also I think better vets out in regards to our work around strategic enrollment um, across all of our district schools and speaks to some of the tasks that we are going to be, either have started to put in place or plan to be putting in place over the next coming three years to strengthen our communication internally and externally, but also in regards to um, better engaging our community through our community school work, um, but then also having a better um, strategic enrollment plan of how we're gonna engage our community in regards to having a better understanding what we can offer within our member district schools. Um, and so that is the current draft. And I don't know if we're necessarily ready for action tonight, but it would be great to get final feedback so we could have a draft three. It is something I definitely would like to try to get adopted um, before we recess for the month of July. Um, I think it's important to be able to get out to our public as we're starting up the new school for our, our new teacher mentor mentee work in regards to internal communications. So if you haven't had a chance to look through it fully, please do. And please feel free to share 
that feedback with m myself and Copy Ray because we meet weekly uh, with Mary Shaw, our community school coordinator, and Kate McLean, our coordinator of communication, um, around the feedback you're providing us um, for um, improving this. Any comments or discussions? Board members, please make sure if you got feedback, you get it to Ray or Jamie. Yeah. I just want, want to say it's this has been a, um, a multi-year effort <coughs> that's involved um, dozens and dozens of people from uh, administrators, teachers, um, students, parents, uh, and um, it's really something that's important. How do we communicate? How we connect? And how we can make a difference and get build the social capital that we need to get our board budget passed, for instance. And so this is a, a blueprint for that. Uh, it's, I think, very ambitious. And I think the question is to make sure that the staff is comfortable with the ambitious uh, tasks that are highlighted here that they're achievable. I, I, I'm a believer that we we should always be stretching but we want to not commit ourselves to something that's impossible. The other thing as you know I think we've got an existential threat that if we don't increase our and uh, recruit new students and retain our students within our SU uh, it's going to be very hard to sustain our ability to achieve what we want to do with our students and and have a fair impact on our our, our taxpayers and that's in uh, goal number six and it's a very important thing and I'm very pleased that it's there the one only one copy I had or one comment was that the pictures on the cover if this is a K through 12 um, we might have a picture or two of uh, Somebody that's getting up there. Um, but thank you, okay. and, and, and I'm very appreciative of the hard work that's been undertaken to pull this together. All right. Thank you, Bill. All right. Um, White River Valley SU Portrait of a Lunar Update. Did we lose anybody? Mm -hmm. Did we lose anybody? I want to hit Rodney. Okay. Cool. Just making sure. Yeah, I just got on the next one. Thank you. So I'm here tonight to update um, the board and new board members on a project that um, I've been leading for the last year around establishing a portrait of a learner um, characteristics for what we um, would like all of our students to demonstrate um, throughout the years of their education in the White River Valley Supervisor Union and when they exit at whatever point that is in your school. Um, so this project has involved um, students, which has been the most exciting component, um, working with adults, um, building administration, as well as some school board members. Thanks, Bill and Michael, for joining us um, in this process. So it's been a year of um, helping students learn and understand um, organizational and communication skills, but also developing ways to gather feedback from all of our stakeholder groups, which happened um, this past fall into winter. Um, so we surveyed through multimedia. Um, we also um, engaged in surveys in cla every classroom within the supervisory union with students as well as staff and families um, and came together in January to um, establish what, what the themes were around, what the characteristics we expected our students to demonstrate. So tonight I'm sharing with you um, the final phase which is something that we have partnered with um, Up For Learning and a graphic designer to help communicate our um, six characteristics and traits um, as demonstrated in the graphic, um, that, the graphics that we shared with you. So there were four different variations um, that were done by the graphic designer. Um, part of it was also establishing um, our <coughs> connection to the, the pillars of community schools. Um, that was something that we wanted to emphasize through our graphic. Um, so there were four shared, um, and we were looking for just feedback on, on those um, different graphics. We did send out a survey. We received um, some feedback on it, which is included in the packet, but looking for other board members to, um, to contribute um, to what was created. 
Um, we weren't, I don't think our admin team was sold on any one. We like characteristics of all of them. Um, but just looking for general feedback as we look to launch this um, in our communities as well as with our staff and students beginning in the fall. Um, so the next phase of this project will be developing um, similar to our proficiency work, grade level expectations for each of the um, characteristics um, identified. Um, and that will be rolled out in our schools next year. Nice, these are cool. So I can do, send out a link to also get written feedback for anyone that would like to give that. Um, but this, the, the, we're hoping to have a finalized graphic um, by fall. Go ahead, Bill. And then. Um, yeah, uh, thanks, Michaela. And this effort, um, I didn't have a clue about portrait of a graduate, and I went online and all that. And this is something that's sweeping the country, and it's really important. What's the end result? What's what do I? Our students, when they leave, whether it's the grade or the uh, graduate from high school, B. And I think uh, that the level of effort that you took to come together and figure out the, it's now six attributes is pretty important and um, more than pretty important, it's very important. And off of the, uh, try to figure out how to represent that in graphics. So I have two comments. Um, if you just have a, a, a minute here, one has to do with the graphics and secondly with how we describe those six attributes. Um, in the four uh, designs that are in front of us, um, two have to do with trees and my gosh, uh, Vermont, the maple tree, uh, the, sim the image and the representation of trees is strength of, of giving us shelter, um, of enhancing our landscape and also for climate change, that's a huge symbol that's important. And the other symbol is the river. Um, we travel down a river of life where we, we, we cross that river to a better side. And those are very powerful things. I happen to think that we can do better than the art or the graphics that are in front of us and, and, and still try to grasp whether it's a river or it's a tree. And so I've asked um, with Ray could put up an example because I think Vermont Life, remember those that, of us that love the Vermont Life magazine every year and every month, um, beautiful pictures that told stories. And so I just grabbed a couple that I'd like us to think about because I think the graphic doesn't do justice to all the work that's taken place here. And I'd like to have it better. So Ray, if you could put something up there, I'd like to show that. This is a photograph of the White River. And what I love about it is it not only shows the White River, which is our namesake, but also the valley, White River Valley. It also shows the, the rough currents that of life. You know, life isn't simple and it's not, you don't go down a single path of, you, you go through some, some, uh, some, some rocky times and the rocks are shown on the left. So I'm not suggesting this has to be graphic, but I think um, it's more powerful. And then we superimpose the six attributes on top of that. Um, and this is an actual photograph of the White River. And the second one um, is a maple tree. One problem I've got with the, this artwork is this isn't a maple tree. Well, this is Vermont. Our state tree is a maple tree. It happens to be a sugar maple tree. So why not have a something? Here's a young maple tree reaching for the sky. And I thought, wow. Isn't that what our students are? They're young and they're reaching hopefully for the sky, for the possible and the impossible. So these are kind of two examples where we can, we can hitchhike with really sound photography to tell our story. I'm not suggesting either one. I've got a, I like the White River because it's 
Um, it's both beautiful and it tells the story right here. We're the White River Valley Supervisory Union. So that's the first thing I wanted to say. And then the second thing is the six attributes. Um, and we've got, uh, they're wonderful. Creativity and curiosity, effective communication and collaboration, personal and community responsibility, resiliency and well-being, academic proficiency, flexible thinkers. And I think it's more powerful to describe these traits as attributes of our graduates. And so I've got some suggestions here, and I just think it's more powerful. Instead of saying creativity and curiosity, we say our graduates or our learners are creative and curious. Instead of saying effective communication and collaboration, our learners are effective and collaborative communicators. It just seems instead of talking about an uh, attribute, we talk about who they are becoming. And personal and community responsibility, I thought, they're going to be a citizen who cares. You can play with my words, but my point is... Did you send the recommendations to Michaela? Uh -huh. Have we yep. sent? Yep. Okay. Um, academic proficiency, I think everything is built on a foundation of academic proficiency, but we want our kids to be lifelong learners. I just think that's the most powerful thing. If the kids can come out of our system thinking about, I don't know it all, I want to continue to learn and grow and develop as a human being and have that intellectual curiosity. That would be one of the most powerful things we ever could do. And in flexible thinkers, I'm just thinking future ready is a term just as I'm old and I don't have a clue of what it's going to be in 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, but we need to have the skill set for our kids that they graduate from here and have that. They are future ready. So it's not necessarily changing the words, it's how we express what our graduate, what our learners are, what they will be uh, um, to when they leave our institution of learning. And I just encourage everybody to consider those thoughts. Um, and um, that's that. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Bill. I think Michael had his hand up. There he is, over there. Michael. Yeah, just uh, quickly, Michaela, thank you for heading up that group. And um, I just wanted to have you let us know, when would you like feedback by? I think it's important for people to have a date to kick that back. And I also would say that the committee, that which has included a lot of input from students, um, has been going on for quite a while. And... Um, this is a, an incredibly important lens for us to be looking at all, all of our decision making through. So it's really important that the board, that you all have uh, had a chance to look this over carefully, because um, if it's going to be effective and used well, then we really need to believe in it strongly. Um, so I'd encourage you to, to look it over. And when, when do you want your feedback by? Um, I would say sooner than later. So I would say within a week or so, um, I'll send out the survey again. Um, to get that feedback um, so that we can get um, the revisions completed um, so that we're ready to kick this off in the fall. All right. So now these four pictures, or this is this what you're down to us picking? Or no, just, we're no. still, this is what the graphic designer came up with. Okay. So we're just trying to get feedback about what to give back for revision because we're, we're not sold. So like the feedback would be yep. Bill thought we yep. used. Okay. So we can give additional Absolutely. feedback to what the, all right. Yeah, yep. Absolutely, please. Yep. Got you. All right. Anybody else have any anything? And you're going to send out a... I will send that out. Awesome. Tomorrow. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Yeah, thanks. Okay. Yeah, thanks for everybody who worked on that. Um, board mentor mentee program. Again, Michaela. Um, so we <laughs> um, so we met la our committee was established last year and we had a full year of implementation of um, mentors with new board members and a handbook that was um, created and used so we met last week and um, a survey was also sent out around that around feedback and we will be meeting um, next week to look at um, a updated digital version 
as well as a hard copy and a binder. Um, that has more information related to individual school districts and what might be helpful for a new board member. And we've also assigned um, mentors to all of our new board members, and you will be receiving an email from me tomorrow around who that is and, and connecting you. So we will be bringing the new revisions back to the full board in May. The idea around the, the new binder will be that we can hand it to when a new board member is elected. It's something we can give them right at that night that they're elected so that they, they have it to go away with and know how to start communicating with everybody right away mm -hmm. and have as much information as possible. But so far, so good with the mentor <coughs> committee. Um, Red River Valley asks you social emotional goals, possible action. So um, creating some uh, measured social emotional goals that align to our social emotional data reports mm -hmm. was a component of uh, my goals this year um, and so I've been meeting with the admin team after sharing with you some revised social emotional data reports in January and if you look at the goals suggested you'll see that most of that data was communicated on Very last thing. in your January thank you uh, data report so what you have in your packet is you have the original overarching academic goals that we call part of our roadmap for success. Mm -hmm. And Anna, this is a very clean looking art job, by the way. So thank you. I was thinking that as I was looking at the other portraits of a learner. Um, and on the back side, we've added the social emotional goals. I think it's important that when we're having academic and social emotional goals, I, I want them to be seen as they're hand in hand because they do support our learners. And I don't like putting that data into separate buckets. They often intertwine. Um, and so you see what we've done here is that on our goals and indicators for progress monitoring, we've added four social emotional goals to this. under. Our overarching goal number one of that we report on out to you every every month um, both at the SU and at the district level around forming and sustaining a comprehensive multi-tier system of supports you'll see the first suggested goal is that by 2027 WRVSU will realize a 25 percent decrease in intensive social emotional supports as measured by one-on-one -on -one required behavioral supports and out of district placements. Mm -hmm. um, and so you, you may say like, well, Jamie, why would that be an important goal around our MTSS? The idea being that as we strengthen our universal and targeted approaches to support, there may be less need of intensive one-on-one -on -one supports for some students. Mm -hmm. It also means, as you've been seeing already, We've been working very hard to have the most free and appropriate education placement be within our SU through the intensive programming we've been building um, throughout the supervisory union. <clears throat> and so that would be a way for us to quantify that. Uh -huh. We've already done quite a bit of good work in that area. And Annette shared that data report a few months ago uh -huh. in regards to the change in our out of district placement numbers. So that would be one goal. The second goal under domain one mm -hmm. would be that we realize a 20% decrease in the office referrals managed by administration, which is what we would consider a major, okay? And that is part of your office discipline referral data that you've been getting twice a year now for a number of years. But this would be us looking across the SU of trying to de decrease those majors by 20% by 2027. And then also at each of your districts, that could be a goal that you're trying to have a, as measurable over the next three years. And then in regards to number three, we set a goal that by 2027, all WRVSU SU schools will have a 33.3% decrease in chronic absenteeism 
defined as absent 10% or more school days for any reason, excused or unexcused, okay? So this is getting at our work that we're trying to do around addressing truancy. And when you think about social-emotional, there's many reasons why a student may be truant. And it behooves us to try to figure out what are the barriers that have been created. Sometimes they're school barriers. Sometimes they're barriers that are created that are outside of the school's control, but that we may be able to support, right, with other um, partnerships like Department of Children and Families with our local regional mental health, uh, Claire Martin. Mm -hmm. And so this is work we're doing already, but we ought to be quantifying what our goal is. Um, and so that's where that comes from. And then finally, you know, I'm not, we're not saying we want to decrease the referrals for HHB investigations, right, because we want to make certain we're investigating concerns. Mm -hmm. This goal is written such that we want to try to decrease the times when they are substantiated because that means our proactive work around HHB and helping teach uh, students learn how to be upstanders and not necessarily bystanders and how to use tools and trying to stop mm -hmm. uh, a situation that could lead to bullying early on. It also means that our reporting systems are working, that when there is a concern, we're trying to address it when it's a minor, not when it becomes a major issue, meaning a major behavior that's, a, you know, admin level response, that those mechanisms are working. So it seemed that by saying across the SU we were able to decrease that number by 25% would be a good thing for us to be shooting to over the next three years. So that's where those goals came from. Um, I think they're written very similarly to how our academic roles were written. Um, and so those are for the board to consider for possible adoption tonight or discussion. Um, and then we could use that discussion to come back to you with a second draft if needed. Mm -hmm. All right. Is there any discussion or comments on the goals? Yeah, I don't, I'm sorry to talk so much. Um, this is fantastic. Um, social emotional, I mean, we're talking about the well being of our kids. And you can be bright and you can score A pluses and everything, but you could have <coughs> issues and problems and everything else that interfere with your life <coughs> and your well being. And so, this, what you've got here is a draft of something that really is important. Is, not only is it important, but how do we know that we're doing okay? How do we know? And I can sit here and I, you know, I'm a positive guy, so I feel pretty good about it, but how do we know? How do we tell our constituents that we're doing well in this super important thing? And so what we've got here are some very ambitious goals, um, and I'm sh sure you've thought about them and analyzed them and come up with everything else. Um, and I think it's terrific. I'm not sure we're ready um, to vote on it tonight, but I just want to recognize, because I, I don't find any problems at all, but it's, this is important, and it's nice to be able to know how we're doing. The, the one thing I want to say is that with goal setting, you want ambitious goals, but you don't want them such that people start to fudge. Oh, I'm not going to, oh, I'm not quite making it, so I'm just, gonna, I'm just going to. No. Um, we reward ambitious goals, even if they're not entirely met, because they are, the effort is there, um, the due diligence is there, uh, the focus is there. So um, I think these are, um, are, are tremendous, and it, it speaks to <coughs> why we're here as, um, as board members. All right. Well, um, board members, are, are you feeling like we can vote on this tonight? Anybody feeling like we can't? Michael? Yeah, I just have a quick question for for Jamie and, and the team, and that is whether or not, you know, given national absenteeism is at, what, 25%, I think, Jamie, is the stat I hear now, is trying to reduce by 33%. Um, it, it's great. It's ambitious. Is it realistic? Well, it would be reducing by 33% of that 25, if that was the case, yep. right? No, I, I understand. 
I think I think I think it is a lofty goal. I do, Michael. Um, I think it's an incredibly important one. I think for our districts that have added some social workers, it's a good indicator to say that's why we're investing mm -hmm. um, in a social worker to better wrap around our families. Um, we were able to successfully budget for a social worker in the White River Unified District. There was an attempt to in first branch. We weren't able to see that through during this tough budget season. But I think it's one of these things too that um, we possibly could look at how we sharing those resources across districts. Some of our smaller districts could be sharing a, a social worker um, like we do right now in performing arts and visual arts. Um, so Michael, I think it it's, we talked this one through quite a bit. If you look at our strategic plan, it's probably an even loftier goal, which Anda has kindly reminded me. I think over, you know, the way I look at it is we're essentially trying to reduce it by 10% annually. Um, and I'd like to say that hopefully with our work, maybe that's something we can do. And we're talking about chronic absenteeism. All right. Is everybody comfortable taking a vote? If so, I'm gonna. Could I get somebody to make a motion? I'll make a motion. Okay, go ahead, Bill. Uh, that we accept the recommendations for the social emotional goals um, moving forward uh, for the the SU. I'll second. Right. So it's been moved and seconded. Is there discussion? All right, hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Yeah. aye. Are there any nays? All right, hearing none, it passes. All right. okay. Now you're feeling okay too? I know you're not a voting member yet, but I just. <laughs> I was just about putting in the chat, like I'm not exactly sure, but right, I, I think I don't count just yet, so. You don't count just yet, but you're feeling okay? Yeah. We still yeah. love to have everyone discuss, so. Okay, yeah. all right, thank you, Jim. All right, um, the communication outreach plan, do you want to vote on that tonight, or? No, I think, give us some feedback and. Okay, we'll give you some feedback. All right, so just remember to do feedback for the outreach um, plan if anybody has it. Uh, public comment. I don't think we got anybody else on, right? No. Okay. And you yes. said we're up to yes, resignations and new hires. Um, so within my report, I uh, listed out on the on the top um, school employees that will be moving on that I am aware of as of now. Um, so um, looking down the list, we've got a lot of wonderful people on the list. Um, we've got Susan Lancy, who is a preschool special educator, um, will be retiring in June. Um, we've got Stephanie Yarnos, who um, is one of our occupational therapists. She's um, one of those young starting out professionals and um, she's moving out of state to broaden her wings. Um, we've got Cindy Boulogne, who is a long time, long time speech pathologist here um, with us. She will be retiring in June. Um, Jesse Dewey, who's a special educator, um, will be stepping down due to some health. Um, we've got Deanna Kerr, um, who's a special educator, um, we'll be moving on just a correction. She'll be um, teaching in a 3-4 classroom in our Newton School. So she'll still um, be working in our supervisory union, just um, moving to uh, the classroom teacher position from a special educator position. Um, we've got Janet Turner, again, a long-term paraeducator um, who will be retiring. And uh, Christina Swenson, um, who's a special educator, um, will actually be going to a job out of state um, and going back to her technology roots. Um, she's uh, initially was, um, her first career was in um, technology integration. So she's going back to that role. Um, so we will, we will miss them, um, but we're, you know, very happy for them and happy that we had the time with them, um, you know, here with our families and our students. 
Um, but exciting um, is the amount of incoming new um, staff to the department, um, especially because when you see the titles of some of these roles, um, I think when we were talking about budgeting, we were like, yeah, we may or may not be able to fill that position, but we should try. And by gosh, um, I found some wonderful candidates for those positions. So. Um, the first one is um, Angela um, Haggett, who is going to be coming on as a special education case manager. Um, again, I won't go over all their backgrounds. You can you know, read that in the report. Um, Hillary Newton, also um, a special services educator. <coughs> Remember, we talked about splitting the roles. So we'll have special education case managers and um, special services educators. They're all special educators, per se, um, but that'll be their, their roles for next year. Um, Lane Fontaine um, will be coming back to Vermont um, as an occupational therapist. Um, we've got Jane um, Coden who will be also an occupational therapist. I've got Jay Papp um, who will be coming in as a school psychologist. Um, so happy to have them um, join our staff. They will be completing their programming um, at our Vermont State University's, the Castleton campus, um, their school psychology program. So very excited um, about that. Um, and we have a behavioral analyst candidate who's um, in the pipeline and in the discussion process um, to be hired, um, who comes with a wealth of experience and is so excited um, to have, have them come on board as well. Um, I'm still in need of um, a speech pathologist and um, a couple more special educators. Again, the special educator roles, I'm in the talks um, with some as we sit here. I've been speaking with some this week, so those roles um, hopefully will be filled soon. Nice. So even though people are leaving mostly due to retirement, we have some wonderful people um, that have a wealth of experience coming in. So, thank you for all your hard work on that. Yeah, you're welcome. It's great to hear that we're. Going and Stacy, to... you'll have that in the reports. So. Yeah, it's all in the report, and it's a really long list. Wait a minute, Stacy, do you still do our minutes, or it's Parker? Now? <laughs> Parker. So Parker, Parker will have them all. <laughs> Stacy does. Parker's policy. on it. Parker's on it, which is why I'm still alive. <laughs> Sorry, Stacy. <laughs> we'll let Parker know that those names are there. Mm -hmm. All right, they're all in there. Very good. <laughs> um, we have executive session. Yep, uh, executive session on contract, just Tara and I. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. We are going to go into executive Does session. Do you have to move or you have somebody yeah. else to move? And, 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 no, we don't have to move, but I, th I think we're going to do the executive session and then we'll adjourn. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, we do have to make a motion. For what reason do we need to say the reason? Uh, for contracts. For contracts, yeah. Did I have a motion? Put us in a disadvantage. Do I have a motion to go into executive session? Move. And do I have a second? Second. All right, so we are going into executive session to discuss contracts. Uh, I need a motion to come out of executive session. So move. Second. All right. All right, we are out of executive session with no action taken. Um, what else we got on here? Is there any other business? Future agenda items? I think we have several of those. Yep. Our next meeting is Tuesday, May 28th. And I'll entertain a motion to adjourn, guys. So move. Second. All right, guys. Thank night, you, everybody. Guys. See you next month. <laughs>